The computer, it's raw power. PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo, their curated gaming experiences. Board games, magic cards, and Dungeons and Dragons. Well, it's timeless gaming for the whole family. And let's not forget swag. This is the quintessential man cave, and I dare you to get bored. What's going on, everybody? This is Graham, and this is my gaming situation for the 2022 season. There's a lot to go over, so let's boogie. The first thing to go over is to take a look at the space overall and get an idea of how small it is and why I made some of these choices. We start with the room. We have three main stations. My computer, or my battle station, the heart of the operation. The cinema section of my room, where all the watching and, you know, curated gaming goes down, along with the board game and storage section of the room. This room also has a fourth function, which is my YouTube studio, all of which are mixed into each section. So let's jump into each function. Computer games. The powerhouse for most of my gaming, my computer. It's a little under the weather at the moment, but it's an AMD Ryzen 7 2700X, 16 gigs of RAM and a GTX, wow, you don't hear those words anymore, 1080 Ti. This is hooked up to three monitors and even the projector when it's behaving. This has been my setup for over four years and I've logged hours of games, work, and raids. And I really can't wait to update this PC to a faster one. It's starting to file behind just a bit in most of the games and uh, editing I'm doing right now. But if you'd like more about the computer, monitors, or my desk setup, check out my desk tour video that I recently did. I go over everything in much greater detail. As for gaming, I usually use the keyboard and mouse, but if I'm playing racing games or adventure type games, I usually use the SN30 Pro Plus, which has been a great controller for hooking right up to the Bluetooth in the computer, just like regular consoles. Speaking of consoles, let's move down to where I spend most of my relaxing gaming and movie sessions on the project, but for that, we need a bit of a set change. The entire living space of this room is really only 10 by 7 feet, so space is limited and we gotta make the best of it. So let's get rid of our Amazon Basics computer chair. Oh yes, very nice. And bring on something, ooh, fancier. Now remembering that space is limited, we have, ah yes, the Kelty. My trusty fold-up double chair. And doubleness aside, I've been using this for over five years at the beach and the house as a couch. This chair is a seat for life, and all joking aside, it works great for when I need it. With the built-in cup holders and dog sidecar, it also folds away for when I really don't need it. So once we have this bad boy set up, what is it that I'm actually viewing? Well, this is the Epson LS300, a fantastic starter projector that provides up to 120 inches of 4K-ish HDR. And at least, this is what my PC tells me when I hook up to it. But specs aside, for gaming at 60 hertz, yes I know, 60 hertz, and watching movies, it's pretty great. Playing story-based games and watching movies on this thing is great. Also, the full review video is already up on the channel, so if you'd like to see more in-depth viewing of this, click on the card below. But as for the sound, it does have its own speakers, but I am using the 2.1 system from Dayton Audio, trying to take up least amount of space as I can because there's not much room under this thing, which I have also done a review of this set when it was my PC speakers. They're fantastic little speakers for the price. The main reason for the odd setup is we really can't mount anything to the walls due to the quarter inch runners holding the drywall to the concrete and and really didn't have much space under it. So we ended up with the basically the screen taking up a majority of the entire space, which is kind of what I wanted anyway. So when you're sitting down low on the Kelty and you're looking at the monitor, the sound hits you right in the right in the jaw and it works great for this tiny space. Another big difference we made in this room was repainting it. Even though I hate to say that, repainting it did make a world of difference. It changed the overall look of the room because we repainted the back wall behind the projector screen a darker color. So all of the extra splash and light coming off of it actually it made, made it look a lot better better. I'm not sure why. Something to do with refraction, but science. I really can't wait to see this thing in a house with a bit more space and the same type of color setup. I bet it'll look 
fantastic. As for what we have plugged into this, we have the Nintendo Switch, the original Smash Bros. edition for all of your Nintendo gaming needs, aka Mario and Link games, along with the uh, PS4 for uh, Netflix only, because uh, someone, Epson, won't put the freaking Netflix app on this thing for some reason. And that's really pretty much it for this area. I still need to get something to convert my older consoles to HDMI, but we have the GameCube there for, you know, nostalgia purposes. As for the stand, I've made it out of all thread and plywood because the dimensions of this thing had to be, well, flexible. And I couldn't really buy something off the shelf that was able to lower the height of of itself up or down more than a couple inches with some feet. So I ended up making this myself. I know it doesn't look the best, but for what I needed it for and how long we're staying here, I think it does the job well enough and you're, with everything on top of it, you can't really see what it is anyway. I also need to figure out how to cut the tops off. It gets stuck in your shorts sometimes when you're walking around it. But the cool thing is, it's got a ton of built-in power, all in one little package. So we do. Ha I did put some rack-mounted power sources on the side that I found for cheap, aka free, someone was throwing it out. We also put down some carpet from Ikea, you know, the salt and pepper shag rug for uh, sound, and you know, it's nicer than sitting on a basically concrete floor, but comfort is the least of your worries in this next portion of the room because you'll be on the edge of your seat when daunted by the decision of, uh, what board game to play. Oh yes. Electronics are my passion and tinkering for days is fantastic, but board games and cards are for all ages. So grab your dice, maybe a cantana, or even toss a burrito, cause we're talking paper people. If you could tell, this is the greatest section of my small, mildly cluttered basement. Board games, strewn across handmade shelving units, and shelving as far as the eye can see. And I just have a ton of these things. I see them as, well, art you can play with. And my favorite pieces as of late are Zombicide, Mystic Veil, and Taco Cat Goat Cheese Pizza. They have been my go-tos for the last year and have always got the party moving. We also have card games and a whole slew of other things that count as games too. If you'd like to see a collection tour, let me know below. I just love finding and playing games that have a great theme to them. Add in a few brews and good people and uh, now you're talking sweet weekend plants. But as for the rest of the room, I have some art, fake plants because I can't ever see the sun down here, camera stuff, and many other nerdy things as well. So if you have a hankering to see anything else dug into, please comment below. I hope you enjoyed seeing my take on 70 square feet of a gaming room. I wonder what else we could do with this small space, but I'll see you in the next one. Davey out.